I'm a commodities person, so I'm looking at coffee prices at a 13-year low. What does that do for your business? Well, it creates a lot of anxiety first. In our case, it doesn't hurt because we work uh, with direct trade since 1991, so we buy 100% of our coffee directly from growers. And more and more, we do over 50% of uh, long-term contracts. So prices are completely offsetting the stock exchange, which is kind of the risking, the volatility, and mutual advantage for growers and ourselves. And this, I think, it's, uh, it's good for also the future of the market because, uh, you know, direct trade allows you to have a perfect traceability and also be able to, let's say, narrate the product uh, to the final consumer. Yeah, so direct trade is great, but then you're looking at sort of trade disruption everywhere. How are you affected by all the trade, the rerouting of trade flows uh, right now in the world? <clears throat> well, you know, uh, coffee prices are uh, unfortunately not so much related to the fundamentals any longer because the price on the stock exchange is so much dependent on other variables like other commodities, like the liquidity in the market, like uh, which market is, uh, the, let's say, the buoyant one in uh, this market phase and so on. So it happened many times in the past that uh, the, there was a real disconnect between uh, the fundamentals and uh, the coffee prices which is becoming more and more unsustainable for, for anybody in the supply chain. Uh, and this is, uh, this is why everybody is seeking for new strategies in order first to increase value added of coffee, better quality, uh, differentiation upon uh, also origins uh, in uh, cultivars so that uh, the consumer, you can command a higher premium price with consumer, like in the wine industry, as an example, and so on. Well, to that point, as you look at growth for Elia, for your company, yes. is it from expansion into new areas? Is it market share? Or is it actually, you know, essentially, upselling? I mean, we, we see all sorts of things like nitro brew and things new, yes. new beverages, cold beverages coming in. Is that part of your growth strategy? Absolutely. Uh, so Ely is the most global coffee brand, so we, we can hardly open new markets. Uh, the main market outside Italy being the United States and the fastest growing China. So we are there to increase the penetration by first of all strengthening our brand like we are doing now by fine tuning all the marketing mix and uh, with our new campaign with a, a wonderful ambassador, Andrea Bocelli, very well known. Heard singer. of him, yes, <laughs> yes. So we are launching new products, relevant one. We just uh, we are in the phase of launching the new compatible capsule in uh, licensing with, uh, with Jab. So, and, uh, and cold brew that you mentioned is also the opportunity. Uh, we are really rolling out with this, uh, with this new product. So uh, going forward, the state of the industry, how much consolidation do you see and do you participate in that? Well, uh, you mean in the growing part or either. in, the, in <laughs> Actually, both? Actually, no, uh, legit, either. There is a general <laughs> consolidation because as a matter of fact, even though there are nearly 70 countries producing coffee, the two first do over 50% now. And this is a structural, I would say, uh, factor which is also, in a sense, a problem uh, for the market uh, due to the competitiveness, which is really shrinking to only few uh, countries, and the chief one are Brazil and, 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 and Vietnam. So uh, on the other side, there is also a, a big consolidation in the, in the roaster industry uh, since, uh, I think, the last five years. Uh, nearly 40 US billion have been invested in order to consolidate uh, the most important brands in the mm -hmm. world. So now you have the two top guys, the two groups, uh, which are nearly 50% of the coffee volumes, uh, which, is, which is also substantial. For us, it's okay, because we have a strategy which allows us to be independent, not only because of our strategy of uh, quality leader, but also the business model. But uh, there is a battle on the, on, uh, in the market field. So quickly, as you look for the rest of the year, what's the biggest worry that you have? I don't have, uh, let's say my main concern mm -hmm. uh, is beyond coffee only, but coffee is also part, which is climate change. So we have been working uh, pre-competitively in the last uh, five years in order to develop a model 
to help growers access to finance mm -hmm. for uh, making their uh, coffee uh, farms resilient to climate change, which is more and more impactful. Mm -hmm. But there is also a significant, uh, let's say, work to do in the mitigation, because we always have to remember that we need to be uh, carbon negative in the next 50 years mm -hmm. in order to save the planet, literally. And uh, ag agriculture has a great contribution yeah. to give because it accounts for 25% of the greenhouse gases emission nowadays. So we need to become carbon negative in agriculture.